Welcome to another gathering of the Gold Key Adventurers Society. Have a seat by the fire as we prepare to help you unlock the secrets of the travel life. From theme park thrills to Purple Mountain's majesty, we want to see it all and do it all, and we want to help you do the same. We all have those bucket list trips, once in a lifetime destinations that we'll get to someday. We're here to help you make your travel dreams a reality. Buy the ticket, take the trip. Where do you want to go? Come on, come on, come on, I'll tell me what's on your bucket list. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. Okay, hey, okay, hey. It's a beautiful day. Happy New Year! It's time to say goodbye before we say hello. Join us for a look back at the travel stories and adventures that shaped our lives in 2019. Oh yeah, and we'll talk about Rise of the Resistance for good measure. Load up an hors d'oeuvres and put on your party hat. It's time to hit the trail with the Gold Key Adventure Society! It's New Year's Eve and we've decided to join several thousand of our closest friends and podcast subscribers in the middle of Times Square to ring in the New Year, which isn't exactly conducive to having a conversation about travel without having to scream at each other to be heard over the crowd, but here we are. First, tell me, do you guys actually make it to midnight? I used to always make it to midnight, but there have been some some recent years where I'm just like, you know what? Nah. (laughs) <laughs> it's not worth it. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a few years since I voluntarily made it to midnight. There have been times when I've been woken up by like neighbors or, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, our <laughs> neighbors like, hey. think that it's time to shoot off firework. Yeah. Every it's a holiday, holiday, Arbor Day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, they shoot off fireworks here in Caledonia. It's a fireworks holiday, but I've yet to see any like home-based fireworks that are really worth the effort home-based fireworks that sounds like, dangerous i guess it's from going to theme parks too much but like now when i ah. see somebody shooting off firecrackers it's just oh we have there's a one of the cul-de-sacs in our neighborhood i don't know where this guy gets these fireworks and i can't believe that no one's shot their eye out yet or lost <laughs> a limb because they're actually really pretty impressive uh we can see them from our house and it's almost as good as the local townships display of fireworks Wow. I don't know where he goes. He's got to go somewhere. Or maybe he makes them illegal. himself. Maybe. <laughs> they, only, they only became legal up here a few years ago. Yeah, it's so very we recent. really take our fireworks seriously. Yeah. Well, this <laughs> guy been... was going to Indiana to buy them long before they were legal right. here and still shooting right. them off. He didn't really care. Yeah. The only thing that's legal here in Virginia are like the sparklers. But they'll still sell them and say, like, fireworks, but all they do yeah. is literally just shoot off a couple sparks. It's I think sad. Michigan only made them legal because they were tired of losing the revenue to Indiana because everybody just hopped across the border. When you crossed into Indiana from Michigan, immediately there were just dozens of fireworks places. Yeah. They were smart. <laughs> they knew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely don't make it to midnight either. And it's been basically since... Since we got married, I think there was one year that we that we challenged ourselves, and I think we took a nap for a little while and then woke up for New Year. <laughs> but, I mean, 10 o'clock's the same as midnight, really. Yeah. Well, my whole theory is the New Year's going to be there when you wake up. That's true. You don't have to be <laughs> there to meet it. it. It's not like a relative coming off a plane that has no ride home. Stay It'll be up there. until midnight London time. Ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> what about the kids? That's- have any of them asked yet to stay up until midnight? Yeah, Ash wants to do it this year. So. Yeah. yeah, ours ours started that probably around third, second, third, fourth grade, maybe. And the first couple of years just passed out on the couch and didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> now they do. Now they're teenagers, so they stay up till midnight every day if they could. Yeah. Well, that's why Netflix is so genius, and they made those kids countdown videos yes. that you can just start whenever you want <laughs> unfortunately make... why it can tell time now but <laughs> it used to work except they made they like teach him they that at like, school they made like 15 yeah. of those and and one year ash was like i would like to watch one i'm like sure and then it's like an hour later and he's like no 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 i got like four more to go and I'm like, there's one for <laughs> yeah. every kid's show on that network or whatever that's annoying which reminds me have you seen what they added on disney plus this week what, the, uh, the Anna and frozen, Elsa Yule Log. <laughs> frozen Yule Log. Yes. I was phenomenal. testing that out yesterday <laughs> to see if I wanted to put it on for ambiance during um, during Christmas dinner when the relatives are over. But my kids and husband voted for the Darth Vader Yule Log. Have you oh, all seen one. this? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. yeah. Where's, yeah. <laughs> it's on YouTube and it's five uh-huh. hours of Darth Vader's corpse burning. <laughs> It's uh-huh. it's actually pretty spectacular. 
<laughs> it's better than the one where Santa's stuck in the fireplace and his legs are dangling down and he's screaming for help. For oh, no. Hours. <laughs> I have not seen that one. <laughs> I think that was on Hulu. <laughs> yeah, I think I think our our Christmas dinner guests will be regaled with five hours of Darth Vader burning. It's going to be great. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've got a couple of news stories uh, to get to. Um, I think the big one that everybody in the world's thinking about is over on the theme side. Theme park side of things yeah so uh star wars rise of the resistance has now opened at star wars galaxy's edge at disney's hollywood studios what are those things say that five times those words (laughs) you you guys know with my whole dixie fiasco that i have (laughs) i have mush mouth when it comes to disney titles but yeah i I made it through that one that was very good i'm impressed yeah and uh i have yet to experience it but heather you yes. just got back from right i correct? did and was so lucky that i was able to experience it and i'm not even going to say ride because it is a ride there's a ride aspect but it is an experience and it starts the second that you pass the 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 it's not really a turnstile but the second you pass through into the queue the experience starts and it is Everything I was hoping for and more. I I don't want to spoil it, but other than to say that the experience starts immediately and it is the single most immersive experience I have ever had at a theme park. That's awesome. I've heard it described as you're in a movie. Absolutely. 40 minutes or so. 20 minutes. The, the, The cast members who work the ride are every single one of them is is functioning as an actor. And you are completely immersed from the second it starts. So much so that they, it's a little bit different than other attractions in terms of if the attraction goes down, they don't have you stand there and wait it out in the queue. Because... They feel that that takes you out of the experience. And I I 100% agree. So if the ride goes down and has to be rebooted, which is a very lengthy process, it takes 43 minutes to reboot this ride because of how many you won't understand why until you experience it. But there's just so, so, so many different aspects. And so it takes a long time to reboot it. And if it happens, they give you a fast pass and ask you to come back later because they really want you to experience it from the second you walk in until the second you exit as one entire experience. And that has me questioning, like, I, I'm assuming eventually it's going to be a fast pass eligible ride for, for everybody. Yeah. So it, in that case, is the fast pass going to bypass any of that sort of story building element that you have to sort of go through I'm, it can't I'm, how can it that's can't. what i'm saying yeah yeah it won't um there is a little bit at the beginning when you first enter the queue where you are just walking through uh, w- rock work and you're kind of walking into some caves so i expect that fast pass would just uh, sort of circumvent that a little bit and take you immediately to where the experience starts mm. interesting it's it's it, it's very interesting. I am curious to see how it's going to work going forward because it, it, exactly because of that, you need the entire queue experience in order to really get everything out of it. So right. there's there's got to be. Uh, hopefully, I'm sure the Imagineers have figured out how that's all going to work because it, it does have a fast pass line. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just wonder the boarding groups are working so well that that may be what makes the most sense for that attraction rather than a yeah, fast especially, pass especially um, now that they've sort of gotten like the it. times concrete and sort of the process with it being like exactly at opening now when they were kind of flubbing around with it for the early openings but yeah i'm curious to see in january how the process is working once the holiday crowds have died down yeah i don't know that i mean i think they're still going to be in even though it's not holiday time, I oh, think yeah. that area is just going to be just as slammed, though. it's Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it seems to me like having a boarding group type philosophy for it would make sense all the time. So maybe this, this may be something that helps them figure out how they how they work fast pass on that one. Um, I, I assume that there is some spot if you got stopped in the queue right at the very beginning when you're just going past the rock work into the caves, that would be OK because you haven't really started the the full immersion yet but once you get inside and the first thing has happened (laughs) it's there's it doesn't make sense to have to stand and wait it out it would definitely take away from it so but it is uh, it's 
It's it's everything that I hoped it would be. It's, it's <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. And it, it makes a lot of sense why it has taken so long for them to get it up and running once you see it. Just the sheer number of animatronics in this thing are it's incredible. Yeah, there's, all the elements. There's, you know, I just... had done so I had read a little bit about kind of a summary of the experience and that even doesn't do it justice. There were things that happened that I wasn't aware were going to happen. It was really <laughs> great. And I can't wait to write it again. Well, and also from what I understand with it being, you know, the vehicle being trackless for portions of it yeah. itself, it's it's a lot like some of the more dense, older dark rides where you uh, you, you can ride it so many times you go see something new oh, every time oh, because definitely it's it's not flat sets; it's right. a fully realized world. So there's oh, things everywhere. To absolutely, notice. and you you don't know where to look. And I think yeah. every time that you write it, you're going to see something that you missed the first time. And there were just, there were spots in it where your, your breath is just absolutely taken away. I mean, I couldn't stop exclaiming. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's really cool. I think any, anyone could appreciate it. Even if you're not a fan of star Wars, you can appreciate it just for the sheer entertaining value of the attraction. But this is what the star Wars fans have been waiting for. It's it's what we all wanted Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run to be, which I do enjoy that. I it, the experience of that is is really cool and I actually just watched the episode of the Imagineering story on Disney Plus where it explains to you how it works and that makes it even more cool. I want to go yeah. back and <laughs> ride it again. Um but it's it's taken it to a whole Rise of the Resistance just takes it to a whole other level. I can't wait for you guys to write it so we can discuss. I know. I'm so excited. I think we've hit the point where anything else that we say is just going to enter into spoilerville. Exactly. So. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised I've been able to say, like, stay pretty spoiler free from the whole thing. But. Oh, for sure. Yeah. There's so many ride throughs that exist out there from day one. And I made sure not to even not to even yeah. glance yeah. at them. No videos. I haven't even looked yep. at pictures. I had seen a few pictures that were actually out there that Disney had put out even before. Yeah, those would be- yeah. Um, but I made sure not to look at any ride throughs. And I had read, uh, what is it, read or there was a basic summary of the of the attraction, I think at D23. So I kind of knew that part. Mm-hmm. And they put out a little commercial quite a few, several right. months ago, I think, that they filmed inside the ride. So I had seen that too. Um, they had the physical uh, structures all done a long time ago, and it's really they've been working on that trackless system and training all the cast. And just is there's so many moving parts to this thing. It's it's really impressive. And I'm kind of hoping it's what they do that they take this experience and when they do Avengers Campus, um, that one of the attractions will be kind of at this scale. I think it's supposed to be. Uh, that's what I had heard about the big Avengers like ride. The, that's the not Quinjet supposed ride. To open. That one. Yeah, it's yeah. not supposed to open right with the land, but eventually it'll be another addition. But yeah, that's what I had heard. So yeah, that would be which, spectacular. Which reminds me of a tangent from that last episode of the Imagineering story. That acrobat animatronic. They had released video of that like a year ago. That did not do the moves that it did. Yeah, it's doing it Spider Man moves now. When they showed it yeah. doing oh, Spider Man yes. flips, yep. I lost. <laughs> yeah, it, right? I saw that too, oh and I was my... like, "Oh, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it should be used." Because when they first did, showed it, they just did like standard normal flips yeah. and stuff. They didn't mm-hmm. pose it like. Spe- oh my god! I know. I thought the same thing. I was like, "Oh my god! Wait a minute! <laughs> it's gonna be cool." And so for the listeners who haven't seen this series, uh, first Disney of all, watch it. It's yeah. amazing. Yes, watch it. It's, it's at the very end of the last episode. They've got this animatronic figure that's not connected to anything. No wires, nothing. They just slingshot it into the air, and it starts flipping around it's and so posing cool. like Spider-Man. It's, what is this world that we live in? It's like it, it, it reinforces for me that Disney Imagineers can do anything. I mean, yeah. seriously. The, yeah. the, the whole thing that came close before this guy was that... Um, that dinosaur they did that have you guys ever seen the dinosaur oh, the free walking dinosaur yeah oh, who just yeah. kind of walks around and interacts he was cool and i thought that was amazing and no yeah. this is <laughs> no idea next, light years next beyond. level yeah. stuff yeah yep okay well i've got a story uh, as appropriate for new year's eve and um this is uh trip advisor has um 
They've put out a list of the world's most popular uh, destinations for 2019. I was wondering if maybe you guys wanted to put forth some guesses of what you think are in the top 10 for tourist for attractions. For 2019. Yep. Hmm. So this is this is based on uh, the most booked attractions of the past year. Something in Iceland. That would be my first guess because all the millennials flocked to Iceland this year. <laughs> yeah, that's you know what? No? Surprisingly... Oh. Surprisingly, Iceland is not in the top oh, 10, but there's one country that dominates the top 10, and that is, any guesses? The United mm. States. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was... That Italy. Was ch- Italy. Italy. Oh, sure. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. headed to Italy. So the top, the number one uh, most popular tourist attraction, according to TripAdvisor, was uh, the Coliseum. Oh, huh. sure. Yeah. I was going to say Venice because you really only have so much time left. Right. It's basically Sadly. being reclaimed by the sea. Yeah. Go oh, now. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. The Coliseum yeah. uh, is very cool. It's classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little yeah. run down now. <laughs> it could use some zhuzhing. <laughs> well, I mean, it needs, it needs to be refurbed. They but... need to plus it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It is really cool if you when you visit if you can go down uh, into the spots underneath the floor where they kept the 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 lions and the isn't that only in Adventures by Disney? (laughs) Yes, it is. Yes, the closest you can get uh, without Adventures by Disney is you can basically stand just above it and look down into it. Another reason to go on Adventures Uh, by Disney? Definitely another reason for Adventures by Disney. Yeah, you should head to www.keytotheworldtravel.com Absolutely. uh, to request your uh, no-obligation quote for an Adventures by Disney trip to Italy, to Rome. Um, Any guesses on, let's say, the top five? Uh, Where where do you think? Paris, France. I was going to say France, yeah. Well, let's, yeah, so uh, specific specific attractions the eiffel tower france, uh, eiffel tower <sighs> and there's one more in the top five from france oh paris uh there's one more from paris in the top five the louvre that's right yep. oh uh, just don't go there in the summer people don't do yeah. it <laughs> no ac <laughs> um rome had one more in the top five the vatican yep vatican museums uh there is one from the u.s in the top five. Oh. New York City. Uh, Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. Got it. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, one in uh, one in Spain. Wait, did I do five already? One, two, three. Yeah, so that's top five. And then rounding up the top ten were uh, the Basilica of the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah, that is cool. Um, ooh. Uh, the U.S. has two more attractions in the top ten. Uh, the French Quarter in New Orleans hmm. and... The Sky Deck at the Willis Tower in Chicago. Don't oh. call it the Willis Tower. I'm sorry. The, it's the, the Sears Tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what Travel and Leisure called it. I Don't know. at me, it's, Chicagoans. It's officially called that now, but it's stupid. <laughs> the tower formerly known as the Sears Tower. There you go. Yes. That's fine. Do we have a symbol for that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we should. And so then there's also, um, let's see, there's two more. Where did I lose? Oh, Anne Frank House in Amsterdam. Oh, and yeah. The that's uh, one you have yeah. to prepare for. You have to get your tickets to that well in advance, or you will not be seeing it. Unless you're Justin Bieber. He's a big fan. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. That's true. <laughs> Biebs. Uh, and then uh, also the uh, Piazza San Marco in Venice. Are you sure Flo's V8 Cafe is nowhere on that list? I feel let like me, it should be. Let me be. look. Like, let me look. Honorable mention, one. maybe? <laughs> well, this list Honorable only goes no. to 10, so... So maybe if we went to the top 25, it would be in there. Yeah. yeah it's interesting how, um, you know, we hear a lot, especially being travel planners, about those hot ticket places like Iceland and, you know, all, all the places that the millennials are going. But um, there's still not enough of them to, to put those places up on the up on the top of the list. I guess it's just the most noticeable because they post everything online. It's if you've been on Instagram lately, it's right. all people at the in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> it makes for great pictures, like yeah. the ice and the blue, like water and everything. It's That's beautiful, true. but you know, yeah. In those steamy, I don't even know what they are. Natural hot oh, those, springs, I think. Yeah, the hot they, springs yeah. that they they go take a sauna, a sauna, and spread <laughs> yeah. the mud all over their faces, and. and you go run and jump in a frozen lake, and then no, you run and jump you. back in the sauna. I, I, and... No. No. Yeah, I nope. can't get behind yeah, that... that tradition. It's just I'll take the sauna part, but I don't want to jump in a frozen lake. Ugh. 
Yeah, give me the sauna and some fermented shark, and I'm happy. I maybe not. <laughs> I'll eat I'll the take horse. A, I'll, I'll take a mummified horse. toe shot to go with it. <gasps> yes, my Ooh. favorite travel story of 2019. <laughs> a sour oh, no toe spoilers. cocktail. <laughs> no spoilers. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> Let's uh let's let's head over for a quick commercial break and then on the other side we're going to do our very own countdown of our top travel stories and travel experiences of 2019. We'll see you then. Bye. Give no, me. don't <clears throat> say bye. Come back. <laughs> Stay here. Don't leave. When it comes to planning your next adventure, knowledge and preparation are always key. That's why a call to your Key to the World Travel Vacation Planner should always be at the top of your to-do list when you feel the urge to venture forth and explore the world. Key to the World Travel is an authorized Disney vacation planner, specializing in travel to Disney theme parks around the world, as well as Disney Cruise Line, Alani, and Adventures by Disney. With over 450 travel advisors who share a deep love for Disney destinations, Key to the World Travel has a wealth of knowledge and passion to help you experience all the magic with none of the work. Wherever your wanderlust is driving you, Key to the World Travel is a full-service travel agency with the expertise to get you where you want to go. So whether you're headed to Universal Studios, Hawaii, Europe, or somewhere a little farther off the beaten track, Your first step should always be to visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a no-obligation quote. Their expert travel planners are standing by to help you with every detail of your perfect vacation. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com or at Key to the World Travel on Facebook. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. So we've moved indoors and we find ourselves on the set of a late night TV talk show. Our wacky band leader sidekick has just played us in from a commercial break and we've settled in behind the desk and on the couch. It's time for a 2019 travel top 10 ish list. In no particular order, we're going to share our favorite travel news stories and adventure experiences of the past year. Um, I'll kick things off at number 10 with my favorite. Well, I've got two favorite news stories, but uh, one of my favorite news stories is the winner of this year's Fat Bear Week (laughs) tournament at Katmai National Park in Alaska. (laughs) It's the story of Holly, the voluptuous and fuzzy queen of Katmai. Um, I really enjoyed this because. It's really funny that this is a thing, and not, shouldn't be surprised that it's a thing with the way the internet works, but it's still very funny that it actually exists. Also, I love bears, and uh, the seeing the webcam footage from uh, the story really makes me want to visit Alaska. Um, so I guess I should share real quick a summary of the story. So uh, every year, Katmai National, For- National Park in Alaska uh, sets up a... Uh, March Madness style tournament where people can vote for their favorite fat bear as the, uh, as the bears are putting on their pounds to get ready for hibernating for winter. And this year, uh, the winner was a bear named Holly and she got really big and fuzzy and cute. Um, (laughs) and still scary. (laughs) Well, yes, they are terrifying murder machines, but you know, they're big fuzzy animals. Also, I can identify with these bears bulking up for the winter And uh, I've got uh, a great memory of uh, from when we first reported on this story. And Jess, you said that the photo of Holly emerging from a river (laughs) with a fish looked a bit like yourself coming out of the shower. Yes, I remember that. Which was pretty funny, if disturbing. (laughs) That's why I picked that news story. That's a good one. I'm going to go with the, uh, first and foremost, I, I, for some reason, because I can't get it out of my head, the mummified toe shot. Oh, yeah, that's definitely <laughs> yeah. my number one for the year. So, yeah, that's the Sour Toe Cocktail, as it's called, um, from the downtown hotel's Sourdough Saloon in Dawson City, Yukon Territory. And uh, I don't know why, yeah, I would think I was listening to our, our clip show, 
and it brought it back. And and the more I think about it, the more I'm like, you know, as the kids say, YOLO, you only live once. So uh, we, I, if we if definitely I, have to drink the mummified toe shot. Yeah, Absolutely. I think that's going to have to be on my bucket list at this point. I don't know the next time I'm going to be in the Yukon territory, but <laughs> next time I'm panhandling for gold, I'll stop in. Well, after after uh, uh, um, Harrison Ford's uh, Call of the Wild comes out, I think that's going to be uh, the hot. Oh, history. for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> speaking of panhandling for gold. My family, my boys and my husband are going panhandling for gold with my father in the backyard of my grandfather this week. Oh, wow. I know that that Ooh. sounds like it's got to be random and made up, but it's actually real. <laughs> <laughs> There's a creek, and my dad goes out there and pans for gold, and apparently he has found some. It, oh, he was showing it off at, yeah. uh, at Thanksgiving, yeah. Wow. What? Like, I, <laughs> I couldn't actually see it, but he was showing <laughs> yeah. it off. Uh, yeah, he refers yeah. to them as flakes. <laughs> yes, yeah. <they're> right? <laughs> so Maybe uh, particles or... Uh, <laughs> oh, and my son Owen is like, well, I, I want in on this. So I think tomorrow or the day after, they're going panning for gold here in Caledonia, Michigan. Awesome. Weird. (laughs) That is weird. Well, I got to say one of my favorite stories from 2019 was the nudist pub in London. (laughs) The Coach and Horses in the Soho district that was officially granted the first nudist license. (laughs) I can't remember if we decided this is somewhere that we actually want to visit or... It depends on the clientele. (laughs) Right, right. And I I believe that they said it was not going to be full-time nudity. It was going to be, it it was special nudist events, and it would be uh, clothing optional. Nudist mixers. (laughs) Yes. There's just still too many variables. It's not. So sticky. Oh, not to mention, I mean. Beer and places you shouldn't have beer. (laughs) Yeah, and I mean. Ugh. The bar stools. I don't oh, want to yeah. sit on the bar stools. I would bring my fight. own towel. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. I think that's part of the etiquette of the uh, nudist community. You treat I it really like a don't know piece much at all equipment. about the nudist community. You, you, you bring your own things to sit on. <laughs> Got a white. Yeah, apparently, uh, huh. back w- when, when I used polite. to play. When I used to play in the band, we uh, we met another band who they actually got on the nudist circuit, and they got booked at um, what? At several there's there's nudist camps. So many questions Michigan. right you now. Just don't so, know about them. So many, and questions. they want entertainment at their uh, at their events too. So uh, he was telling us all about how they're just really wonderful people. You just have to remember to bring your towel with you everywhere you go <laughs> and keep your eyes up. <laughs> yeah, well. I don't know where you keep your eyes. <laughs> where do you honest. look? Way up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one's a pass for me. <laughs> I love the idea that it exists, though. <laughs> it just oh, yeah, I mean, makes me laugh. I'm all who's, for something for everybody. So. Who's hanging exactly. out in London thinking, wow, I wish I didn't have to do this while wearing pants? <laughs> <laughs> the climate in, in London is often not... Not I conducive. Think it'd be very comfortable. No, <laughs> yeah. balmy, if you will. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I had one other news story that I wanted to put on our list for a highlight of the year because um, I think this is this news story that really it was the first one that really set the tone that I wanted for uh, the show, which was <laughs> we we can talk about you know serious travel topics, but I also wanted to be a little lighthearted and offbeat, and so. I just want to make sure that everybody remembers the story about the time that Fidel Castro's <laughs> <Yes>! crocodile <laughs> bites man at aquarium party, uh, crawfish party in <laughs> Stockholm, Sweden. <laughs> oh, that was, um, that was a killer. <laughs> I don't know what about it that captured my imagination, whether it's the fact well, that, I do Fidel know. Cro- that Fidel Castro had pet alligators or crocodiles. Yeah, and- Alligators, crocodiles, crocodiles, and that he, and that he then gifted these crocodiles to a Russian, a Russian. cosmonaut. That's right, not just a Russian, but a cosmonaut. <laughs> and then the cosmonaut gifted them to the Swedish aquarium. And then some guy got bit by it at a party. <laughs> at a tra- but also, who knew tradi- the crawfish party is? Yeah, more that's what I was going to say. Thing. At the traditional Swedish crawfish boil. I, yeah, no. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I still wish it was just like some sort of like crocodile rental that you could get for parties. You know, it's like, should we get the clown? Should we get the magician? No, the crocodile. The crocodile. TM, 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 TM. But I want I'm, Fidel I'm... Castro's crocodile, <laughs> not just any crocodile. I don't want like a, a normal crocodile. I want a celebrity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a new business model for us. <laughs> I really thought yeah. you were going to say the story about poop coffee. But no. Oh, I forgot about the poop coffee. Well, that was your story. <laughs> like we all did. <laughs> that was your story to tell, Heather, because it... Because it <laughs> hit so close to home. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now let's... every time I'm traveling and the serious businessman next to me barks out his order for black coffee, I can't decide whether I should let him... Re- you know, reap the rewards of his rudeness or warn him that he shouldn't be drinking the coffee. I'm you ashamed to say I never the warn them. <laughs> <laughs> you start off going, good coffee, huh? Really good, right? Yeah, you should have it? another cup. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want to know what's in it? <laughs> you get a stack of cards, tip cards printed up that yeah. just have that news story. Here you are, sir. <laughs> you should not be drinking that coffee. <laughs> Quietly slide it onto his tray. <laughs> Ooh. After he drinks the cup of coffee. Ooh, no. <laughs> That's not nice. <sighs> All right, who's got number seven? Um, well, mine, uh, my pick is not as comical, but it is one of my favorite stories of the year, and that is the announcement of Universal Orlando Resort's uh, third or fourth, depending on who you ask, uh, theme park that will be coming in 2023, Universal's Epic Universe. Um, unfortunately, we have no details it's whatsoever. Epic. Yes, other than it will be epic. And, and they have art for it. Yes, there's concept art that if you take a look at it and you know your stuff, you can pretty much determine most likely what each land is going to be. But yeah, we don't have any actual details yet. But, also, what you're, when you said 2023, right? Yep, 2023. Let's just take a minute and reflect on how many years that is and how many years it took some other things to open up recently and how many years and it took, ponder this how you know many years to, it took pandora just the land of pandora uh-huh. i will i will give them a bit of credit they have been already working on this for probably like a year now so you got to add that even in. yeah but even that that's not very long i know, I know. <laughs> i'm i'm fine for them going fast and i'm hoping that maybe lights a fire under certain competitor to uh-huh. maybe increase the speed and and maybe even build a new theme park themselves. I know that's really that's a shot on in the my dark, wish but... list every year. Yeah, new Disney <laughs> theme park. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Far, let's get Epcot sorted first. Well, yeah, that's true. We hear you, Dave. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Dave. <laughs> I'll, I'll insert that in post. <laughs> Number six. Number six for me wouldn't be necessarily one specific thing, but it was my favorite thing to do every week was to search out the weird, wacky (laughs) hotel or hotel room, like the Nutella Hotel or Buddy the Elf (laughs) Suite or the Sleeping in a Tequila Barrel, all of that. Or the potato. The (laughs) potato. (laughs) Starchy sheets. Yes. I had a lot of fun listening back to all those when I was putting together our clip show, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the tequila one I was actually thinking. that That's actually the only one that I honestly would like to do. Oh, yeah. Tequila I mean, barrel. Yeah, I 100%. just love tequila, so. <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, a travel highlight for me this past year was um, back in February when we went uh, to Walt Disney World. And it was a first for both my youngest son. Uh, well, he went to Disneyland when he was practically, when he was like one. And, but so we took him to Disney World this past year, right after he turned two. And just the difference that year and a half or so made of him understanding and he's a Mickey freak. Um, but then it was also a first visit for my youngest brother, who's twenty. Something. 20 something <laughs> <laughs> yes in his 20s and so getting to see both of them experience um the the place that we love so much was was pretty awesome for me and experience it together that's kind of cool <laughs> yes yeah yeah it was awesome and all the kids love uncle john a lot so that was pretty cool that he got to share that with them i'd say uh <laughs> my the the 
travel highlight for me this year would be um, finally getting to go to Walt Disney World during the holidays. It's uh, really the only time of year I've actually never been there. Um, and so finally, I decided this was going to be the year and packed up the family and we went down about two weeks ago um, and did uh, about four days down there. And we went to Epcot, did the Festival of the Holidays. We did Mickey's not er, not so scary. <laughs> Mickey's very, very <laughs> Mickey's merry Christmas party. Very merry, not so scary. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, they could do that if they just put like Nightmare Before Christmas in. But um, but yeah. <laughs> It was uh, it was really great. They, I mean, I I have been to Disneyland at Christmas, so I knew sort of what to expect with Disney Christmas. But I feel like Walt Disney World really does it on a completely different level, and that basically everywhere you go, there's something holiday related that's new and different to check out. So it was definitely worth the trip, and I recommend if anybody wants to experience the holiday stuff and not have to deal with the holiday crowds that. The week after Thanksgiving is a really great <laughs> yes. time to go. <laughs> yeah, it's it so was. Good. Uh -huh. We left the Saturday after Thanksgiving, <laughs> and it was great. So. That's one of the very few low weeks left at Walt Disney World. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and I was looking for at the whole year. I was yeah. looking at dates and trying to figure it out, and I was like, "Well, that works perfect." And <laughs> it is the slowest. So it it's the slowest I've seen it personally in a couple of years. Travel highlight for me for 2019. Wow. We did our first river cruise and I Ooh. really, I wasn't sure whether I was going to like river cruising. I love ocean cruising and all the river cruise boats, just like, Oh, there's nothing to do on the boat. It's so <laughs> small. It was fantastic. It was just phenomenal. You're basically, you're, you're going right into the heart of the city on a, on a river boat. And my favorite mm -hmm. thing I think was, was canoeing in Strasbourg with my kids. I learned something very important about my son, Owen, and that is that he sucks at canoeing. <laughs> so I put him in the front to be the power and I would steer and he, he's very ineffective at paddling. So I was paddling, I was steering Just, and moving us forward and it was exhausting. <laughs> But it was really yeah, his his enthusiasm levels for pretty much everything don't seem to lend to uh, That's true. And being the power having, plant. He's having a great time. He just was garbage at it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the things you learn. At least you learned it now. This is true. Next time I'm picking someone else to be my partner in the canoe. Just leave him on shore. Yes. Well, I had another adventure experience uh, this year that was really, really special for me. It wasn't necessarily the kind of travel that we would talk about um, all the time on this show or that we necessarily would book as travel planners, but um, I took my oldest son to scout camp for the first time uh, this summer, and we had a weekend, long weekend of adventure in the woods and getting to share the camping experience with him and those kinds of things, taking him out and, you know, shooting a bow and arrow and a BB gun and swimming in the lake and all those kinds of things. It was really good for my soul. It was something that was a big part of my growing up and it was really nice to be able to share that with my son. So that tops archery. my list. I'd love, I'd love to go shoot. That's because you're good at it. Yeah, I'd love you're to better go than shoot Jeff at it. Uh, yeah. I'd love to go shoot bow and arrows with Wyatt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was in Cub Scouts when I was a kid and those were my favorite things to do or were, were like the jamborees and the, the scouting camp, the scout camping trips, all that. So yeah, that's awesome. I've outgrown camping, but I did back in the day. I, I loved some camping. Yeah. Do you, do you glamp I mean, now? Yeah. What's that? Do you glamp now? Do glamping? You know, I would consider glamping. Yes. In an air-conditioned, glamorous tent, luxury tent. I was like, does, tent. does Tesla make an RV that you could convince? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, or just the kind of RV that the GP, Not, that your grandparents Oh, have. yeah. Our grandparents get, have uh, an RV that's nicer than my house. <laughs> Tell Literally. your husband to get the cyber truck and yeah. then you could sleep in the bed. Ugh, that thing is so ugly. <laughs> it is really no, ugly. No, thank you. <laughs> I, don't need a, I don't need a Tesla truck. <laughs> One Tesla in the house is enough. We're doing our part to save the environment. <laughs> yeah. um, I love the fact that there that we we talked about the fact that there is a an actual job uh, that you can be a Christmas elf. <laughs> who, yeah, who doesn't want to do that job? <laughs> it's really tempting to and in Scandinavia, quit everything and <laughs> yes. move up to yeah. 
Have you ever read uh, David Sedaris's book about the time he spent as a yes. Christmas elf at Macy's? Every, <laughs> every year I listen to his audiobook version of that that he reads. It is it's beautiful. So Holidays on Ice. So yes, good. it is. It, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. I recommend everyone read it or the, uh, the audiobook is actually spectacular. It's great listening to him read his stories. I love all of his his work, but yeah. <laughs> Learning about Christmas Town at Macy's. <laughs> it's amazing. I got an Audible credit I need to use up. I think I know what I'm going to spend oh, it on. Oh, perfect. Highly recommend it. Yes. You will not regret it at Don't all. listen to it with the kids around, though. Yeah. 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 Well. It isn't family friendly. <laughs> I can't concentrate on anything with the kids around. So that was a... <laughs> Put your headphones on and just start walking. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's got to go shovel the sidewalks, kids. <laughs> Three blocks later. <laughs> Spreading the Christmas cheer, that's all. That's right. Yep. <laughs> well, which one of us is going to be the first one to sleep in the basket hotel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Yeah, I'd head down there, too. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, unless the beds are actually shaped like baskets, like, I want everything in the hotel to be shaped like a basket. But what if the beds were like shaped like a sandwich or something you'd put in the basket? Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's a picnic that's basket. A wheel yeah. of cheese. Yeah. And then I just had a, a thought of if that's the case, that the toilet would be shaped like a basket, and I don't think that I'm okay with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. That's not very effective. <laughs> Take that no. back. Sorry about that. <laughs> However, I don't know if it's any better if we imagine that everything is food shaped. So. Yeah. Good point. Uh, yeah. Maybe there's limits to the theming in that. <laughs> Limit is right at the bathroom door. <laughs> yep. I had a lot of great theme park experiences in 2019, but up at the top for me would have been uh, Halloween Horror Nights. I had been before, but I never set foot in one of the houses until this year. And this year I was I went in every single one of them. And it was a lot of fun. Scary. Scary as yeah. hell. But a lot of fun, <laughs> especially the Universal Classic Monsters would the Bride of Frankenstein screamed in my face and made me pee my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what that you pay for, though? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. That was a lot of fun, and I would definitely do that again. Yeah, I want to make that a point next year. Star Wars mm-hmm. Galaxy's Edge opened in 2019. Oh, it was a great year. Hagrid's, Hagrid's, oh, Hagrid's coaster of many words. I can't say all <laughs> the names. Hagrid's magical creatures um, motorbike, motorbike adventure. adventure. Is that it? Yeah. The, yeah, that, something like that. that is a spectacular coaster. Uh, we rode again at Thanksgiving, and it was just as fun as the first time. And that reminds me of my one of my favorite story news stories from this year, which was the bee infestation that <laughs> took over <laughs> Hagrid's coaster. Yeah, that was weird. That, that came and gone. That came and went so fast. But oh, that's good. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's great. But I don't know. That just that captured so my odd. imagination. <laughs> we stopped counting. What are we on, Dan? Was that number seventeen? Like negative. 20. Yeah, we were, we, we've hit our ten. Um, yeah, I think we've hit ten. I've got one more. My number one story of the year. My travel oh adventure experience is is I'm really thankful and excited that I've got the ex- the chance to make this show with you guys and Jeff and Dave and. Hopefully in the coming year, we're going to get some more guests on. I've got some ideas and plans for that. We, we had some plans we just thought of this week. So Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Good. I can't wait to hear those. And it's it's really cool that we get to talk to at least dozens of people out there every week yes! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> about, about this oftentimes nerdy stuff that we love. So um, that's Aww. my number one travel story of the of the year. I love that. I was with you until you I included you Dave guys. in that, but you know, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just kidding. poor Dave. And as we long as come Dave. back, where is Dave? Uh, his kids had stuff to do, oh. so he was. He's We're online miss- writing nasty comments about Epcot, about on Epcot message yeah. boards. Yeah. We're missing Dave yeah. and Jeff this week. <sighs> yeah, those losers. They don't have enough holiday <laughs> cheer in them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks for listening to us this year, um, uh, and uh, come back in 2020. It's going to be great. And I think the only appropriate way to end um, our New Year's Eve party here is wait a second. Uh oh, 
Oh, a laser <laughs> light show, and we're gonna hit it. <laughs> So there we go, my desk lamp's changing colors. Ooh, that's fancy. <laughs> right. I want a fancy light bulb like that. <laughs> I'm putting that on my list for this year. Yeah. Obtain yeah, fancy to, colored light bulb. <laughs> Dave just needs to switch out his boring white Wi-Fi lights for some fancy ones. Yes. All right, it's almost midnight. We've stayed awake, and that means it's time to count down to 2020. So... Um, are you guys ready? Yeah. We're ready. Let's do it. Three, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. See you in 2020, guys. Oh, that's crazy. Don't go to close. <laughs> To ask a question or share your travel story, you can reach us by smoke signal, carrier pigeon, or send an email to goldkeyadventurers at gmail.com. And make sure you follow the Gold Key Adventure Society on Facebook and Instagram. A huge thanks to our sponsor, Key to the World Travel. For all your travel planning needs, visit www.keytotheworldtravel.com for a free quote and help planning the trip of a lifetime. Tell them the gold key adventurers sent you. That's www.keytotheworldtravel.com. Key to the World Travel, your key to a magical vacation. Thanks to Outer Vibe for the use of their song, Hoka Hey, for the intro and outro of our show. Find them on Facebook at The Outer Vibe or check out www.outervibe.com for tour dates, music, merch, and more. We'll see you next week for another meeting of the Gold Key Adventure Society. And until then, remember, life is short and the world is wide. So go have an adventure.